Hi everybody, we are live again for another Schoolscape online webinar. Uh, as you know, the purpose of these webinars is to help your school as we in this present area, era, I suppose, of uh, not actually being in school. So I'm quite excited. Uh, in studio with me today, we've got Damien, who's Head of Operations, and we've got Justin, Managing Director of Interactive Audiovisual Solutions. And they're going to be presenting two offerings that I think are super relevant uh, for schools at the moment. So, gents, thank you. It's great to have you here with us today. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Good. Thank, thank you, you very much. Hi, Damien. Brilliant. Um, for all of our schools, uh, you will see on your right, there's a chat um, tab. Please say hello. It's great to see all the hellos coming through already. There's also a questions tab. So if any questions pop up, please pop them into the questions tab. And what we will do is we'll make some time at the end to handle those. So I think we're going to uh, get straight into it. Um, Damien, maybe just if you can give us a bit of an intro on your business uh, before we get into the detail of the demos. Yeah, sure. So we are Interactive Audiovisual Solutions. Um, we are essentially the sole distributor for CleverTouch, which is a range of interactive flat panel displays. Um, and with that associated um, software, uh, we distribute also. Um, and recently, as with, with many situations, we, we had to make a quick turn in terms of, of our offering. Um, and we've come across uh, this uh, fantastic uh, virtual classroom solution um, that we that we would like to share with everybody today. Fantastic. I think we are all shifting and shaking. I think teachers are having the same thing now, teaching from home and stuff. So, and I think from our side, Schoolscape side, we normally do physical events. So it's always great seeing companies move about. Um, before we get into your actual products, maybe what are the challenges that the schools are facing at the moment? So, apart from not being able to be in the classroom, um, the, the challenges we are trying to address are, are is essentially this virtual classroom situation where um, teachers are having to conduct their lessons from home um, and with their, with their learners being at home also. How do you... How do you bring that classroom environment back into um, back into the home? Um, how does the teacher take control of the classroom? Um, you know, being remote. Um, so the solution that we have here allows that classroom feel to come back, um, even though the teacher is sitting at home or the kids are sitting at home. The teacher has now now has the the ability to conduct the lesson in a very similar way to what they would have done. Um, in the classroom. I think, Damien, I think you've, you've hit something away. The research we've done is I think many of the teachers are missing that interaction and standing at a board, actually being able to engage with their learners. So maybe uh, I know you're going to present two offerings. Uh, what are these offerings and how are they relevant for schools? Right. So the, the one offering that we do have is the classroom management. So that would be managing the teacher managing devices inside of the classroom um, and that would be your traditional teaching method if there were devices in the classroom um, this tool would allow the teacher to manage um, any sort of content that's on the device um, can manage sharing can manage um, tabs that are being um, utilized apps that are being utilized all within the classroom environment now we have a situation where we are not allowed to be in the classroom. So um, our platform allows the teacher that's, um, that same sort of um, management, I would say, not necessarily control to, to the nth degree, but more management in terms of what the, what the learner is engaging with on their device during the teaching process. Okay, brilliant. So uh, uh, if I understand it conceptually, you've got a product that can be used now for remote, and then you've got a product that then translates to when the schools go back into class. Absolutely. Um, awesome. So I think most relevant at the moment is because everyone is sitting at home. Uh, let's start by talking about your remote solution. And uh, I know we're going to get into a live demo from Justin quite soon, but before we do that, Damien, uh, in a nutshell, how does it work? 
Okay, so just a little anecdotal story very quickly about, um, I was, you know, when you're trolling around in social media um, and you see these things pop up with this new craze of TikTok that's popping up. I saw a little video that's been, that seems to be trending at the moment of this um, teacher who's teaching, trying to teach a class on Zoom, it's about 20 odd students in the classroom and they're all connected to the Zoom session. And you've got this one little prankster who always ends up pranking the teacher, but the whole class gets involved. So they would start singing SpongeBob songs or they would start doing a mannequin challenge all of, all of a sudden while the teacher's busy. And the teacher's got no control of, you know, actually engaging these students. You actually see this, this one guy who just is he's sleeping through every class. It's actually quite funny. So there's no way of, of the teacher actually controlling um, that that environment, like sort of switching switching their mics on and off and you know, having them make funny faces at each other, all those sorts of things. So when you're using platforms such as, you know, your traditional Zooms, um, Skypes or Teams or WebExes and, and all those sorts of things, those are essentially designed for um, uh, not virtual classrooms, they, they designed for, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, video conferencing, sorry, yes. Video conferencing, whereas, whereas this Radix teacher view is, is essentially bringing the bringing the teacher into a virtual classroom for the teacher, so the teacher there has control of the students' mics. Um, the teacher has control. Um, she, the teacher can view what they are looking at uh, on the device at any given moment. So, if let's say, uh, for example, the teacher needs them to be focusing on a particular document that he or she shared to the class, they would be able to see if that student is. Um, busy on Minecraft or busy um, playing mm -hmm. solitaire in the background or you know or, or doing something on social media for that matter or, or any tab on the internet that they are not supposed to be on the teacher can view those and close those tabs to make sure that the engagement is in the class at that moment in time and that sort of control only happens when the child is in the class. Once they've left the class and they've got full control of the of the personal device again. Okay, that's brilliant. I think um, I'd like to dive into a, a demo now, Justin, and, and maybe just while you are sure. going to share your screen and get that ready, um, Damien, just one more yeah. question. Um, sure. What, so for your remote solution, what devices does it work on? We've had quite a few device questions come through. Yes. So at, at this moment in time, the you would have to you would need the full um, Chrome browser. So it would work on a Chromebook, a Mac or a Windows, um, Windows laptop or desktop. Um, however, an app version of this is um, is currently in production or in development, let me say. Um, and as soon as that's available, we will we will let everyone know. Um, but at this moment in time, as long as you've got a full Chrome browser, um, you can access this platform. Okay, brilliant. And, and one thing, sorry, one more thing, which I think it is worth mentioning. Um, am I correct in saying that this application uh, for this remote system is actually free until June or July? Is that correct? That is correct. So, yes, um, we want as many people to experience this um, out of classroom, in classroom experience. Um, so we've, we've, um, Radix have been generous enough to make this platform free at, up until the 1st of July. Um, and, um, what's, what's nice about the whole platform also is that, um, the teacher can have as many classes or as many students connected to this as possible. And it's very easy to install and, um, there's the, the, there aren't any apps or anything that you need to install. It's just Chrome extensions um, and the installation process. It takes you through all of that when the teacher actually invites the student to the class. So it's essentially a, a matter of clicking next. It's nothing, nothing too technical or over the top. Okay, brilliant. That's fantastic. And uh, I think it's amazing that it is free. It's incredible. Um, Justin, we're going to hand over to you. Uh, your screen is now shared. Brilliant. Um, okay, great. Please, can you dive in with the demo? Okay, thanks, Peter. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two views, um, obviously, because I'm using one device. 
So what you can see at the moment is the teacher login. They would log in through teacherview.live and they would have the option to log in with Google or Microsoft. Um, before I log in there, I will show you the student side. So down here, you've got the student section and this is where the student will enter in the uh, dedicated class ID that the, that the, um, the teacher would share. Um, okay, so what I'll do is once you've logged in to either one of these options, I've logged in with Google, what it'll do is it'll take the teacher to, let's open the tab up, to their dashboard. Okay, and as you can see here, this is now the teacher dashboard before we start the class. And I've created three classes. If you've got multiple classes, you can actually select a card view and a card view, and then you will have your classes down here, or you could just search them. Um, I've logged in with Google at the moment. So what you'll notice is I've got the ability here to actually sync with Google Classroom. So if I've already created classes um, and attendee list, that will then automatically sync within Radix, which is a very nice uh, feature to have. And simply by adding a new class, I literally just go to the add new uh, class here. I name my class, um, maths class, training se session, whatever it may be, select my icons and so on and so forth. And then I save the class. And what will then happen um, is you will get a dedicated classroom ID. As you can see, all of these are different. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, move over into the view that you would get once you've logged into your class, which is this over here. So straight away, what you can see is I've got three students logged in. Um, there's Nadav, I've got his, his, his mic muted for the sake of not uh, getting too much feedback through the session. But straight away, this is what the teacher sees. So I've got three students and straight away, I can see exactly what is going on on their device in real time. Um, obviously, this is a very powerful feature. We, we don't need to share one at a time. I have this view at all times. So what you'll notice is I see the status of their battery on their devices. So I can instruct them to plug it in if it's getting low. I have a view of their camera feed and only I am able to mute or unmute their device. They don't have that uh, um, selection on their side. Um, what I can also do is make their screen full screen if I wish to. And then what we've got is we've got a few options at the top, which I'll quickly run through. But first, I will show you the individual student options that I have. So each student has their own um, sub tab. And over here, what I can do is get into an individual chat um, with that particular student. Um, I can reconnect them if there was an issue, which will actually reconnect them to the class without them having to do it. Um, I can share their device with the rest of the class by choosing that selection. Or what I can do is I can actually select the tab feature here, which gives me a full list of what they've got open on their device. Um, from here, I can go and close it down. If it's um, you know Facebook, for example, I think Damien actually has Facebook open. There you go. No, so I've got a, a view here of what Damien's <laughs> got open. So, so I could go and close that down. Uh, which gives me as the, the, the teacher a little bit more control of what's happening in the session. Um, then what we've got up at the top here is a, a few features we can use, um, which, which mimic the, the level of control we have in a classroom. For example, you know, raising attention. So if I've noticed that the students have drifted off and are not on the, the content that I've made available, if Damien's drifted off onto a different uh, application, I can bring him, up, bring him back to attention. And what this will do, once I hit the attention button, you'll notice all of the students' devices uh, will come back to the Radix teacher view, as you've seen there. Okay, so that brings them back to attention. If they've not had to do anything, I've, I've controlled that myself. Um, then what we've got is the group chat option. So instead of into entering into individual chats with students, I can enter into a group chat, which will address the whole class. And then very powerful teachers love this is a, a shared whiteboard. So if I launch the whiteboard, that will automatically launch the whiteboard on all of the other students' devices. And down the side here, you'll notice I've got the, the students that are in the class and I can go and write on this whiteboard, which will then be viewed on their devices, or I can actually give permission to join in on the whiteboard. You'll notice there I've given Damien permission. He can now write on the whiteboard and contribute to the session. So we've got a powerful tool here where we can um, add in images, uh, share documents on the whiteboard and, and run through 
you know, a brainstorming session, for example. Justin, I think um, that's all... fantastic. I think mm. it's it's one of the things that a lot of teachers are, are missing is uh, how do you teach a lesson, uh, teach a lesson? I think a lot of re are recording and sending it out, but this allows you to have the whole class on. You can literally allow the people to ask questions by unmuting them. I think that's incredibly powerful. Sorry, please continue. Definitely. Yeah, no problem. So that's a little bit on the whiteboard. I won't go too into it. Then what we've got is, um, so the three, uh, well, let's call it four methods of communication is obviously verbal through the, the mic on and off. Then we've got individual chat, which will address each student individually. We've got group chat and then the send message. What this does is just sends a, a one time, you know, you can use it to send a one time instruction to all the students. You know, please get back to work or um, please open up the file I've shared. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't allow for a dialogue of communication. Um, then what we've got is the survey option. This is quite self-explanatory, so we can enter into a quick, uh, you know, do, have you been enjoying the session, yes or no, or we can create little quizzes here. Um, share websites, I believe this is also quite powerful and a very nice tool for, for teachers. So instead of actually sharing a website link or URL or traditionally, you know, WhatsApping a link um, to a student and they'd have to open it in their browser, what we can actually do here is open up a, a URL or a website for the students. So if I go and type in a website here, I'll just go to our, our website. And if I share that, you'll notice the students haven't had to do anything. This website is now going to launch on all of their devices. There you go. Okay, so there, Damien and Dave have, re have received the, the website. There we go, it's all loading. So as the teacher, I can do that myself. So we, we don't have to rely on the students to type in the URL or go to the website. I can do that myself. Um, okay, then you'll notice this clear hand section over here. This is, uh, this is quite nice as well. Um, obviously, all the students in the class at the moment, their mics are muted. If Damien wishes to grab my attention, he can either send me a message or he can raise his hand. So Damien, I'll let you ask you to raise your hand now. There you go. You see Damien has raised his hand. That's now my instruction to then uh, enter into a chat with Damien or I can unmute his mic and, and have a chat to him. He may need some assistance on the work I've provided and I can then assist him. Once I've supported him, I can go up here and just clear the hand and we can continue back to the session. Sure. And um, then lastly, what I just wanted to show you down here is we've got the ability to share files through the platform. Again, I believe this is very powerful. Um, so I don't need to leave the platform. I can go to Cloud Share. And what will happen is if you've logged in with Google, um, you will be directed to your, to your Google Drive. If you've logged in with Microsoft, it'll be OneDrive. So from here, I can now share documents uh, individually with students or to the whole class or I have the option to just upload directly from um, my PC. Um, and once I share that, that is then made available to uh, each of the students. And they equally on their view have um, the option to send a document back to me. So again, quite powerful. Um, then I think Peter, lastly, just to not drag on too long, policies. This is a very powerful feature as well. So what we can do here is we can apply policies to all the students or individual students. Um, if we know we've got a troublemaker in the class that likes to go on unauthorized websites, we can set an individual policy for that student um, blacklisting a certain website or whitelisting a certain website. So we've got that level of control in the classroom. That is brilliant. So, um, yeah, I believe that covers most of it, Peter. Any, anything from your side? No, that's great. I, I see we've got a, a lot of questions that come through, which I want to get to now. But, but before we okay. do that, I think maybe, um, Damien, I'm just going to make you big again. Um, can sure. you maybe in a nutshell just explain? So this is uh, the software that will be used for remote uh, teaching. Uh, how different and what is the software like that would be used in a classroom? Because I'm just thinking schools will use the remote stuff and then when they go into the class, they want to use the classroom. So maybe if you can just explain that a bit. Yes. So at this moment in time, um, the, the remote, the virtual classroom um, platform works with, works with your Chrome browser and Chrome extensions. Um, and I've noticed that some questions have been coming up uh, with regards to apps and um, installation and so forth. The classroom, the classroom app itself um, would work on any of your 
mobile devices. So if you've got a tablet or an iPad or um, a laptop or MacBook or Chromebook for that matter, you can then um, install those apps for your classroom management. And the classroom management um, device works on your school's network. So if you've got Wi-Fi, um, and what's nice about this is, is regardless, it doesn't matter if your internet is down at your school, as long as you've got some network, some sort of network connection, um, the classroom management system will work because it just works on your on your local network. You don't need internet for that. Whereas with this, um, the virtual classroom, um, as I mentioned, it's a Chrome extension, and um, it's, it's, yeah, it's you just you just attach that to your to your um, your Chrome browser. Okay. So and conceptually, so the the remote system. Um, and the classroom are similar in that you have similar functionality. Uh, is that correct? You do have similar functionality. You've got a lot more control with the classroom, okay. um, and I'm going to I'm going to call it uh, the classroom on-premise um, solution. Um, you've got you've got a lot more control where that's concerned because um, you can actually get there. You can go and get your IT manager involved, and they can um, not just blacklist and whitelist. Um, uh, websites, but they can blacklist and whitelist um, apps um, that the uh, that the kids would use um, on their devices. Um, and essentially, you would you would um, use that in in a situation where the devices would be uh, owned by the school. Okay. Um, so so your level of control in the on the on premise classroom version um, is a lot more. Whereas whereas the your virtual virtual classroom um, set up the Radix Teach of you with your Chrome extension here, you have a level of control. Um, however, um, I'm sure you can agree that this level of control is a lot more than anything else out there um, that people are currently using um, gives you and allows you um, to, to conduct your, your class. Okay, awesome. Um, I think we've got quite a few questions coming through. So let's, um, I think, uh, dive into to those. Um, so uh, I'm going to just jump in. Um, ah, here's the question I was looking for. Uh, all right, so uh, your, your remote uh, solution is free now after June. What is the price? So it's free for two months. Uh, someone's asking costs thereafter. Okay, so you're looking at a at a ballpark figure of around 2,000 rand per teacher per year. Um, and remember I said you can add, you can, um, you can have as many students uh, on your, or in your classroom or as many classrooms as you want to on your platform. Um, so that is, that is the cost there. But um, also I just need to mention that um, uh, Interactive AV, um, uh, we are a distributor. So we will work with um, whoever your preferred supplier is in your school um and we can then you know build a solution for you we um you know that would that would tailor make uh, or we we along with your service provider can tailor make a solution that would work best for your school okay brilliant the next question and i think this is big on everyone's mind what is the data usage like uh, Damien, do you want me to jump in there? Go, go for it. Okay, so so the, the the honest answer is we are not entirely sure, but you'll notice that a Dove from Radix is actually um, answering some of the questions. Um, you'll see there Nadav, he is actually the managing director at, uh, at Radix, um, and I'm sure he can add those into the comments or we'd be happy to make that available an actual use case and case study of, of how much data the platform actually uses and, and share that with everyone. I would also just like to mention in terms of um, the, the data usage, you will notice that um, when Justin was doing the demo, the video aspect of, um, of the teacher view is, is quite small. They didn't put a lot of focus in um, you know, high quality video for a good reason. It's because the data that is being transferred, the information that is being transferred um, needs to take preference more so than um, uh, I as the teacher who, you know, um, uh, so, so whereas your, your other platforms such as Zoom and Teams, um, they, 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 
you know, a lot of the um, focus goes on to us being able to see each other properly and clearly. Um, and Addix focuses on the, the full experience in the classroom in terms of getting the message across and getting the information across, pardon, uh, getting the information across properly. Thank you. Um, I had a question here. Can individuals not in a school use it, uh, like a private practice or a private teacher, or could an individual teacher buy it for themselves and not for the whole school? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, Peter. It's actually a very good question. Um, I mean, this is a powerful training tool, you know, train the trainer, um, training teachers. Um, you know, this is a powerful tool. It's not necessarily just from a teacher to a, to a student. Um, it's a great way of, of aiding, um, you know, people who may be a bit more technically challenged on a PC, aiding them along the way through the material you're training them on. So when you name your class, you can name it training center, training room. You know, you have the discretion of, of calling that environment whatever you want. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas asks a sure. uh, question here. Can you apply universal policies, i.e. can you decide a set list of resources, example, my cyber or Google Classroom, YouTube, um, and then the rest are blacklisted? Or do you have to... If I'm understanding... Yes, yes. Like? Yes, you can. Sorry, so yes, you can, can put in... This is the only places you can view. Correct. Awesome. Correct, you can. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, uh, Verna asks... Security, encryption, built-in, compression. Um, so maybe, I know we've spoken about data, but maybe if you could just give us a, a bit about the security of this. Sure, so they, um, they, they use um, AWS servers um, and they use these servers all over the world. So there, there is, um, uh, Radix do take a lot of um, care in terms of your personal information um, and in terms of, of what information is being uh, broadcast. So the, the are in endpoint in, um, encryption involved with this, um, and we can actually make that information available to you in, in terms of what sort of security is involved um, with all of the platforms that they, that they currently have to offer. Sure, and Peter, I've seen that Dav is answering some questions um, cool. in the chat. Yes. Um, just for everyone, if, if you can, pop your questions also just into the questions tab. It's just easier for us to follow and know what we've answered, but I'll get you some of those in the chat as well. Um, yeah. uh, Nicholas asks uh, another great question. Can you produce a report for the session post-class? For example, if a student uh, repeatedly breaks the rules, can you provide a report for the guardian? Uh, so this is for discipline issues. So what reporting functionality is there? Okay, Damien, you want me to jump onto that? Go for it. Um, okay, so there's no reporting functionality built in um, per se at the moment. Um, but what I will say, um, and the Dub is in on the session at the moment from Radix, um, we, they take all of these points on board and they're con continuously developing and redeveloping the platform. Um, for, for an example, you would notice that within the platform at the moment, there is not the ability to record the session that is coming soon. Um, at the moment, you would have to use a third party recording um, piece of software to record that screen and, and the session. Um, so there's nothing at the moment, but we'll definitely take that on board and relay that back to, to, to Radix. Okay, brilliant. Um, I think uh, there's a question that is in line with that that's just come in, Kurt asks, does this work only when having a video conference with learners? Can we take control of their devices when having a group chat? So, sorry, it's slightly different. Um, so, go for it. So, the on-prem at the moment allows for remote control. That is not available yet on the distance learning platform. Um, Nadav can correct me if I'm wrong in the in the group chat, but I believe that this is being looked into um, to provide that level of control on the distance learning platform. Okay, brilliant. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, uh, next question is, uh, I am assuming website blacklisting and whitelisting only applies as long as the session is active is that 100 percent okay. so what will happen is when you apply a policy 
to, let's say, one student's uh, device. While they're in the session, that policy will remain. And when they rejoin the session, that policy will remain until the teacher deactivates that policy. Brilliant, thank you. I see uh, Nadav has responded. The recording option is available and will be introduced on July the 1st. So great news that is coming. Um, gents, we're literally going to go down to the last one or two questions because we want to try to keep to the 30 minute time limit. Um, uh, someone asked, uh, do you have an affiliate program? So I'm guessing that is a yes because you use resellers. So if someone wants to contact you to become a an on-seller, is that fine? Yes, 100%. Okay, fantastic. And then um, I did uh, uh, miss a question right in the beginning. Um, how easy is it uh, for students to install? So if you could talk about the remote version to start with. Okay, um, so that is quite easy. You literally go to your Chrome Web Store, um, download the Radix um, student extension, which is free and literally takes a couple of uh, seconds to, to install. And once you've installed that, you then have the Visio student extension where you can enter the class ID and you're in the class. Brilliant. Um, gents, we are going to end it there. Um, uh, I think uh, what if you can be online a little bit longer, just any of the questions that we didn't get to. Uh, we want to keep it short, uh, sharp and sweet for the schools that are listening in and for the viewers. Key question, sure. Sure. next steps. If someone wants to get hold of you, I know you have a reseller network. Um, how do they find a reseller or how do they get a quote or how do they get more info? Okay, so they, they are more than welcome to contact us via in, uh, email and that would be info at ias-av.com. I see Peter's just put that up on the chat there. Uh, drop us a mail um, and we would we would be more than happy to do a more extensive demonstration for you um, once you've got in touch with us. Um, and we would also point you in the right direction if you are looking for a reseller or, um, or any other or more information regarding the product and anything else we have to offer. We'd be more than uh, happy to assist you via um, that platform, via email. Brilliant. Um, gents, thank you. Uh, Justin, Damien, you've been fantastic. I also think it's amazing. Thanks, that you opened it up for free for two months. I think if I was a teacher, I'd go grab it and use it for the next two months, especially uh, get a feel of it. Um, uh, so thank you so much to everyone who viewed. Uh, please reach out to the gents on info at I ias-av.com they'll be able to assist give you a quote more info um, also just for the schools we really recommend that you check out some of our other webinars tomorrow we've got snaplify that's also made their offering free they're going to be the webinar uh, we've got the guys from 3p that are going to be presenting matific learning uh, uh, matific reading eggs a couple of things and then on thursday we are doing one on personal protection stuff for going back to school so sanitizers um, desk dividers that kind of thing so please check those out but we really appreciate you linking in today uh, damien justin thank you we appreciate thank you time. again peter and thank, thank you, you very much again thanks for the opportunity brilliant Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.